Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and I'm continuing my Sussex border walk. My look at the county of Sussex all the way round, and I'm hopping about um, from my starting point in Worthing, and I am now reached Felpham, which is just east of Bognor Regis. And there's some amazing properties in Felpham. Now, I may have upset a few people, in my previous video where I was at Elmer and Middleton on Sea, and I apologise for perhaps some of my remarks, but down there on the coast where I was running, I was overwhelmed by all the gated estates and the CCTV cameras and the private no entrance notices and the yellow lines. And uh, so I made some remarks that said that I felt a little unwelcome there, which as an outsider, I, I, I actually did. However, I have heard from people who've been a bit of upset about that and said, hey, we well, know we are nice people. And I did actually say in the video that you were, I'm sure, nice people. Anyway, I've moved on from there. Perhaps I'll come back another time. Um, but I'm going to explore the wonders of Felpa. I feel more at home here because there are much older and uh, interesting properties. And you know what I'm like. I'm a bit of a traditionalist and I love the old. So let's see what there is here. Just walking past the George Inn there, which looks a very lovely pub, and at the back an oldish building here, which makes you wonder whether that was perhaps the old brewery. Who knows? They've got um, some barrels just stored out the back, so you never quite know. I'm going to make my way down to the church first of all um, because it's a 12th century church. Uh, there probably was a church here m well before that because it's mentioned Felpham in the Doomsday Book. And Felpham means a fallow water meadow apparently. So let's go and have a look at the church and then there's some other more famous um, connections with Felpham to look at. confess I know nothing about the church other than that it was uh, 12th century um, this one as far as I'm aware but as I mentioned before there must have been an earlier Saxon church in its time it does look very lovely and it's got quite a large graveyard here or churchyard I should say um, in and around here which which means I guess the population here must have been at one time uh, quite big and and also very important. So clearly the church has grown over the years. It's got a lovely west tower here and I can see it has um, I, quite a large chancel and then um, a r large nave rather and then a large chancel as well but um, like most churches modern additions all around here but very 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 beautiful love the masonry work here on the tower with the flint and uh, napping and then this I guess must be local sandstone um, on the side there making up the, the church tower absolutely fantastic I must bring with me or get hold of a copy of Dove's Guide that's a, a book that tells you all the churches and the bells 
that are hung in the tower and what key they're in and all of that. I've got some bell ringers who follow my channel and um, they often tell me what the bells are. So no doubt someone will make a comment and tell me what they are. What I also know is inside the church are some very lovely windows and they are celebrating the work of William Blake who lived in um, Felpham for three years in a cottage that we're going to go and have a look at um, if I can find it shortly because he plays an interesting role in the village life. <music> Well, unfortunately, I haven't got time to go and uh, go in the church and have a look round. It's one of those things I'm going to have to come back and do another time. But here is a, a rabbit, very lovely lich gate, which I think, according to a sign on the wall there, was erected in 1897. And perfect setting for this wonderful church. However, we're going to go down Lima Lane here, or Lima Lane maybe it's called, uh, because I want to find William Blake's house and also tell you a little bit about him and also a confrontation that happened here uh, in the beginning of the 1800s. So William Blake, a lot of people wouldn't remember the name of William Blake in an earlier video um, we talked about in, uh, I think it was Rustington, wasn't it? Um, the Jerusalem poem that was composed. Um, William Blake wrote the words for that. In fact, his poem was adapted into the, the anthem that we know. He was born in 1757, died in 1827, and he was an English engraver, a painter, a poet, and an author. And he lived here, I think, for three years between um, 1800 and 1803, I think it was. Um, and he published his own books. And when I say published them, he, he etched them because he was an etcher by trade. Um, he printed them, he colour stitched them, bound them, and with the help of his wife, Catherine, sold them, although not in any great quantity. And generally in his life, he was pretty much neglected or ignored and an often thought of being downright mad. He was also a visionary and claimed at four years old that he had seen God's face peering through his bedroom window. So he, he very much was inspired by spiritual and ethereal things. There are some fantastic houses here. I just love, love these cottages here. They just look absolutely gorgeous in Waterloo Road. I haven't been to Felpham before, I'm ashamed to say, and it's a, it's a beautiful village. I really like it. Now, we're approaching a pub here called The Fox. And it's an interesting pub because at the beginning of the um, 1800s there was the threat of course from the Napoleonic Wars and in order to counteract that a whole load of dragoons were billeted around the south coast and some were actually billeted in the pub here or the inn as it was um, and one night on August the 12th 1803 William Blake found one of the dragoons a bit tipsy perhaps drunk in his garden. We're going to go and have a look at his house because it's just a stone's throw from here where he lived. And the dragoon was asked to leave by William Blake, but he refused. So William Blake grabbed him by the elbows, apparently, frog marched him up to the pub and deposited him back here. Well, the dragoon, John Schofield, was outraged by this, reported the incident to his commanding officer and said, that William Blake had defamed the king. Now this was uh, sedi sedition 
and so the commanding officer then reported this to a magistrate and it uh, went um, up the chain until there was a trial I believe in Petworth um, against William Blake for sedition now I don't know whether anything ever came of it I don't suppose it did but um, an interesting pub nonetheless there's a sign on the door or a plaque in the wall rather that says that um, the pub early 18th century pub but it was um, burnt down in 1946 and rebuilt in 1949 so although we look at it now this is not the incarnation that uh, William Blake would have marched the dragoon down to so let's go further along and see where William Blake's house was whilst he was staying here <laughs> So here it is, William Blake's cottage, where I think it's uh, said that he, w he w wrote the lines in one of his uh, Milton poems, which was taken into the um, tune of Jerusalem. And uh, this is it. Unfortunately, I can't go in or anything like that. It's privately owned. I don't know whether they open the doors ever and let people in. I'd be fascinated to know. but. This is it. William Blake, artist, poet and mystic, lived here 1800 to 1803, according to the sign there. So that's marvellous. That's our William Blake connection. But I'm just going to drop back a little bit um, and head west a fraction because I want to take you to what is reputed to be the oldest property now in Felpham. And I understand it's probably around 1500 AD. So this house up here is Pear Tree Cottage, reputed to be the oldest one in the village, which is lovely to see something that is that old, because often you see things from the 17th century, but this from the 16th century is just glorious. So looks are quite deceptive here because although it looks like it's made of brick and flint, I understand that it's a timber framed property which would give it that time frame of um, Tudor period, 1500s. And it's a four bay yeoman's house and I understand that one of the bays would have been open and was probably a workshop for the owner at the time and then later on not quite sure when probably the 18th century perhaps it was in a, a bit of a bad state the additions were put on the front two bits that you see here and then all the nap work and the brickwork around it so utterly fantastic and lovely to see I've now arrived back on the coast, down by the sea. It's not far from the village, actually. Um, and the sea, of course, is one of those things that we've been protecting for many, many years from all sorts of invasions and also smuggling. And of course, we would have had coast guards. There's a boathouse cafe here, which um, we're out of season in December, as I'm filming. But you can imagine here, it's great for kids and Pete and families and what have you coming along having their ice creams but here in 1861 was the Coast Guard's boat here in a some sort of shed I imagine and there was uh, Coast Guards here registered I think from around 1295 uh, four unmounted Coast Guards were positioned here 
and then later on I think in something like 1699 there were um, preventative men um, and ones with horses who could uh, ride up and down the coast and make sure that there was no nefarious goings on and and then later on there were coast guard cottages actually built halfway between the village and the sea and I'm going to go and have a look at those before I finish my video. Um, there was quite a lot of them, I think there was about 46 people employed on the coast guard on this bit so it must have been quite a quite a dangerous or difficult place to police back in those days. Sadly the force no longer does what it used to do and the Coast Guard cottages are all now private houses. But uh, it's a lovely bit of coastline and then as you go further east as I will be uh, continuing we get into Bognor, Bognor Regis. My little muse just on the far west I suppose um, far never eat yes the far west I'm getting my east and west mixed up um, of Felpham and that way is Bognor behind me and up here just tucked away halfway as I said between between the main core of the village where the church is and the sea is where the Coast Guard cottages once stood and they were in operation from about 1810, 1820, these particular cottages, and then it closed in 1920. But they are beautiful cottages. We're just going to see if we can have a peek. Now it does say it's a private road, so I probably really can't go very far, but I'm going to have a, have a little peek, see what I can see without being too intrusive. And here they are, red and yellow brick cottages. Absolutely delightful along here. And in an L shape, there are another at the far end of the screen. You'll just see the others. Wonderful. This is the other row of cottages that we saw in the distance there. You can't get to them because uh, of this wall and the little sheds behind them. But here we go. We can just make out numbers 8 to 15, the old Coast Guards. Yeah, interesting. We can't get in, can't even get a peek. These are the gates to the cottages now. I was just rather hoping that we could... Oh, here's one. Maybe we can just peek through here. Just the other side there. How marvellous. Well, that's it for today's walk and exploration of Felpham. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe. Become a patron and support what I do because that's the only way I can keep these videos going. And I will carry on with my circumnavigation of the Sussex border walk. So if you've enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget um, to leave a comment and be interested in your views. And I'll see you on the next one. Till next time, bye-bye, bye-bye.